On July 23rd of this year, I celebrated the fourth anniversary of my 21st birthday, <laughs> plus five. <laughs> or as my grandson insists, it's the 50th anniversary of my 39th birthday. Uh, or however you slice it, it's 89. Now, I, I'm of Swedish descent, and whenever the Swedes sing happy birthday to you, at the end, they always say, du ska fylla hundra år, which means you should live to be 100. Well, I tell you, there were many, many times during my life I did not want to live to be 100. But I'm here today, starting my 90th year, telling you I am exactly where I want to be. My life is exciting. My life is rewarding. And you know, in order for things like that to happen, you have to take adventures. So I thought if someone who had lived 89 years shared their adventures with you, you might perhaps be inclined to take that journey too. Because believe me, it's worth it. So I'm here today. I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to challenge you to embrace your falls. Because only then can you experience that really empowering word, rise. I had my first major fall when I was about 50. I was going through a divorce. Uh, I have three daughters. Two of them were still at home. Uh, I didn't have much money. I didn't have a degree. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. So for the first time, I sat down and I talked to myself. I answered myself. And most importantly, tried to be honest. You know, sometimes it's hard for women to be honest. I hate to admit that you men do some things better than we do. But, <laughs> but you are more honest with yourselves than we are. Who am I? Where do I want to live? Uh, what kind of people do I want to surround me and support me? Uh, how do I give back to my community? And I also learned I need lots of pats on the back. And I need to feel I make a difference in helping people to be the best that they can be. So with a friend of mine and 15 extra pounds, uh, I found out what a nutritionist does. And I thought to myself, ah, Here's where I belong. I can do this. I can do a good job at this. Because not only will I meet my needs to help people to be the best that they can be, but it will also make me accountable for my own vanity. My career went on for quite a while, but there's something I'd like you to think about when you think about yourself. You know, when you buy a new car, it's a big deal, right? And it comes with a manual. And the manual says, uh, put premium gas in it. So you put premium gas in it. It says, bring it in every five, 10,000 miles for a lube and an oil job. You bring it in for a lube and an oil job. If you want it to look nice, like it does when it's new, you not only have it washed and cleaned, but you detail it from time to time. And here we stand with the most magnificent piece of machinery that was ever invented. Have you read your owner's manual? <laughs> Do you know what you came with? You know what you have to work with to be the best that you can be? I had my next fall, uh, let's see, it was about five years ago, uh, and I was at a, a, a leadership training meeting, and it was in a, uh, an auditorium pretty much the size of this, maybe it was a little bit larger, uh, and I was coming down to come to my seat, which was sort of in the front. And you'll notice up in the back there, they have uh, some railings that, you know, will lead you down to a certain spot. And of course, you know, your children become your parents after a while, you know, hold on to the railing, mother, look where you're going, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I had my hand on the railing, but I was coming down, and as usual, you notice my hands are never behind my back, I'm always talking. And I put my foot down to go into what I thought was the aisle. Well, it turns out that the, the, uh, the aisle ended where I was going to put my foot down. So I took this tremendous fall. And I knew I'd done something wrong because it really hurt. And here I had about 500 women, everybody looking down. <laughs> and of course, they had to call 911. 
And for women, I tell you, it's just delightful. I don't know how they get a chance in firemen. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it really helps when you're hurting and you look up at these beautiful faces. And uh, they decided that they had to take me out. And because it was a small place, they couldn't get a gurney in. So they brought in one of those boards. You know, you're watching all the football nowadays, and you see lots of times when they can't take the player out on a gurney, they strap him to a board, they lift him up, the whole stadium goes crazy, applauds, and puts his fingers up, I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> well, I took that trip. <laughs> And uh, believe me, my heart goes out to these young men because it really hurts. You're putting on a good show. <clears throat> then they got me to the hospital, and uh, now I'm 84 years old, and I've fractured my femur. So they decided we have to operate. So in comes this lovely young nurse with a pair of scissors. I swear they looked that long. <laughs> and she said, I'm here to cut your pants off. And I looked at her and I said, over my dead body. <laughs> you don't understand, I have a Tahari suit on. <laughs> so I said to her, okay, I'll make a deal with you. I'm gonna count to three, I'm gonna hold on to the side of the bed, and when I say three, you're gonna pull my pants off. <laughs> and she said, I can't do that. I said, oh, yes, you can. <laughs> so I said, one, two, three. She pulled and I screamed, and these are those pants. <laughs> I also went back to work about three and a half weeks later. But I had one leg that was an inch and a half shorter than the other. And I'm a shoe freak. I had like 60 pairs of shoes in my closet. And I thought, what am I going to do? So I was lucky. Here comes my vanity again. I found a gentleman who could fix my shoes so that when you looked at them, you didn't realize that one shoe was much taller than the other. A little vanity is a good thing. <laughs> <clears throat> then, uh, I guess it was about M March or April of this year. Uh, I was at a friend's house going to talk about uh, what we were going to do for a certain program, and I forgot, because that does happen when you reach my age, <clears throat> and that her kitchen went one step down into the family room. So I'm talking about, and then I want to, and down I went, and this whole side of my face hit the hardwood floor. And believe me, that word is right, hard wood. <laughs> so then I got a hematoma on the, top, on the right side of my head, about the size of a tennis ball. And it was draining all down my face. And it's funny, it only drained down one side, and it stopped right here. So I got to thinking, OK, what are you going to do? I may be 89 years old, but I'm very busy. I have a very busy life. So I thought to myself, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to kind of, you know, hibernate for a month or whatever? And that's when I thought, oh, how about scarves? And I can wear the color that matches my face every day. <laughs> so my final thought to you, I'm going to read. It's something that I shared with a friend of mine, oh, maybe 10, 12 years ago. And she reminded me of it. So I'm going to read it because I want it to come out exactly right. There is never any need to be hard on yourself or to think you should have it all figured out. You always know as much as you are meant to know at any given moment. And growing into your fullness is a process that unfolds with divine timing. You and your life are beautiful works in progress. Enjoy the discovery of who you are and embrace your life's lessons. Your instruction manual will naturally create itself. I truly believe that, and I hope you walk away feeling the same way. Don't fret the falls, folks, and especially you young people. Don't be afraid of those falls. Don't let them get you down. Use them to teach you to rise. <laughs>